Hi! Today I want to review the awesome Terror of the Sheep that is by Emily Carding. I know everyone's talked about this. This is crazy good. Crazy good! Crazy good! If you like Celtic mythology, the Fae, the She at all, or want to know more about them, definitely an awesome deck. One of the reasons why I, I had to have it, I'm a huge Karen Marie Moaning fan, and she has she has an amazing series called the Fever series. So if you like any kind of urban fantasy, especially with like Fay and She, and it's done so well, she's such a good writer. Um, yeah, d read that and then get this deck. <laughs> I mean, obviously they're not correlated other than other than that they're both you know dealing with the the Fay, but um, yeah. With that said, this this deck. Is incredibly otherworldly. Uh, a lot of people, I've, I mean, I've seen a, before I purchased it. All the video reviews I saw on YouTube were talking about the the um, profound nature of the deck, um, and it is. It is. It is. Um, Schiffer Publishing. Um, I, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the cards, and we'll get to the book last because I like that. <laughs> I prefer that. And here's the backing. Uh, my bone, I have the Bonefire Tarot and this deck, both from Schiffer, and while these cards, they are a little sticky when you first get them, they do eventually, um, I'm, oh, they're in order right now, so I don't want to shuffle them, but they do, once they do finally do break in, eventually. So, don't let that hesitate, you know, how some, you know, some decks are just immediately effortless shuffler, shuffling decks, uh, this is not one of them, but that's okay, because it's worth it. So, let's start. Here's the full, and you're going to see the guidebook is really good. It's short and sweet and also profound, and there's actually, the Minor Arcana have uh, a little poem, and then it, all it has is key. Well, we'll talk about the guidebook later, but um, here's the backing. And the cardstock is nice and thick and hearty, and... It's just, it's beautiful. It is ethereal and deep and I don't know what else to call it. Um, excuse the glare. It is a very colorful deck. I like, I love color. And the Empress. And the glyph in the back is incorporated into all the artwork so you can see on the Empress's womb uh, area or sequel chakra. She is, um, she has the glyph and the emperor. Yeah, it's very lively, colorful. This elder, the, uh, the hierophant, uh, this is, it's neat how, I almost didn't notice it at first until it's like, okay, so there's the she, there's a snake, there's a tree, and there's a, a spare seat for you to come sit down. And let's talk about all the new age stuff we're working on. <laughs> the lovers. It's a different, well this deck's different, but the, the lovers card is quite different. And the chariot, this is beautiful. So um, when I first got it, I only would do, do, you know, really, really meaningful readings with it. And you know, only ask it super meaningful questions, and I feel like, you know what, maybe I don't need to be so afraid of it. Not af I was not afraid. I don't need to be so hesitant to just use this. I really, I want to get, you know, I'm, this is this is a full flip through. Um, the review of it is that I'm very happy with it. I am enjoying getting to know this deck. Yes, it is um, hard hitting. Yes, I feel like it knows aspects of myself that it brings out, brings to light aspects of myself. I'm like, ooh. Okay, you know too much. No wheel of fortune. But you can see, especially when we get to the moon card. Um, I mean, they're all, not all this justice alike, how she's doing the acrobatic balancing. And I love the hangman, the perspective. I love this perspective from the hangman. And death. You're going to see, especially when we get to the, the pentacle suit, you'll see a lot of like this uh, stone hinge type megaliths. And 
I like the, um, she talks about in the guidebook, you know, even though Pan's not a Celtic or, you know, it's not a she-related god um, or deity, um, it was the best way to express the, uh, the earthy nature of the, the devil card in the tower. It's like almost like the idea of death being a phoenix, you know, this is the change from within, breaking apart. And the star, so pretty. I mean, everyone loves a good star card, but look how pretty. Excuse all the glare, I don't know what to do. It's just so pretty. Hmm. Yeah, you, um, yeah. Oh, here's the moon. So you can see above the surface, it's one way and then we'll flip it over. And then you can see this reflection. There's a whole other world going on in the reflection of this moon card. I love, I love. It's like I sat down and studied this card in depth. I'm like, what is going oh, all? What, what, what is all going on in this card? And the sun, which is on the actual box, I'm asking you to join her. So yeah, I wanted to just start. I just want to be able to start asking this deck. You know, I kind of want to just like use it only this deck for like for some period of time. Like you know. Like, well, I'll say like a week, but a couple days at least. Just like, just let let myself ask it all the questions, you know. Um, not even the mundane. Just I hope you know. It's like some car, you know, some decks like don't mind like basic the traditional Rider weight. It doesn't mind if you ask it. What's your day gonna be like today? Or your day to day living? And this deck, I was like, I just never. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm too embarrassed to ask it anything super, you know, unless it's super deep, but I'm like, no, I want to get to know this deck, you know, it obviously knows, the the readings I've done with it, it's like, whoa, it knows me so well. Oh, sorry, I didn't even specify. So the dreamers are, dreamer three is the uh, air, swords, swords, air, and, um, and they have little nice keywords, so soul loss for the three swords, very very profound and this card whew, like she's the crows are eating pieces of her soul the dreamer four and so it was like restoration <sighs> yeah i have, i really do enjoy her keywords i saw how some people say you know the keywords don't always correspond to like the question you're asking which is you know i'm fine with that it still helps give it like a not, nice new perspective on the card itself so it's like you don't need if you know you pull up this card and insights voyage isn't really hitting hitting the spot for you then you can look at the card you know it's not the keywords not absolutely necessary for every question so the coward betrays and there's always there's different perspectives so you know if you're asking yourself a question or trying to get to some information about this oh hold on Okay, I'm back. All right, so with this card, the Dreamer Seven, Seven of Swords, a coward betrays, and you know, just like on the, the Hierophant, a lot of there's a person behind the tree. There's obviously the person in the middle getting ready to get like chopped and you know stabbed to death, and then there's like the people dishing out this um, dishing out this punishment or you know murder, and so it's like. Oh, if this card came up for you, it's like, which one are you? Are you the person behind the tree that may or may not have like betrayed the person that's getting ready to die, or are you the one that is butchering some, about to butcher somebody without any facts or real, you know? I don't know. There's so much going on. I love it. But um, are you the coward or are you the one who has been betrayed? And here's the Dreamer 8, the Web of Mirrors. This is a good use of a spider web being stuck by your, by your own reflection. Um, and then here's Dreamer 9. I know the reflection is crazy. That's a nightmare. And so the Ten of Swords for me, this is Ten of Swords, is, has followed me. It's, it's finally stopped now. Now it's the tower. I'm like, God, I can't get a break from the these scary cards. But this card pulled. It would pop out on me, shuffling, and then it would be in my readings, or it would be the base card or the you know the clarifying card. And I'm like, you are so scary. 
And I finally, it finally clicked what was, um, what these, all these tennis swords from all my tarot decks were trying to tell me, finally. Which, well, I mean, for me personally, it was, um, it was me being over dramatic or just over, yeah, just being s dramatic on, p just too tightly gripping on to the idea, this, the negative, the, ne the negative perspective on my issues instead of just being like, it's fine. I just need, it's like telling me to be more laid back. But when you see this card and you're already like anxious and kind of stressed out, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, it really is as bad as I'm thinking. You're like, no, no, no chill out. This is, this is you. You're just being so over dramatic right now. <laughs> so anyway, I'm taking my time, but it's such a good deck. It is so crazy good. And the, the court cards are amazing. I love the princesses. Well, I'll tell you why when we get to the, the wands, but here's, so all the court cards have a gift and it's not what I thought it would be when I, like when I first got this deck and I'm like, so, you know, the page of swords, like gift telling, oh, that's beautiful. And the wind and there's the, like the shadow aspect to this card is, you know, like being careful with your words, but um, as well, but, you know, in your thoughts, but there's a beauty. Oh, it, it adds a nice layer of beauty to the cards. And here's the dreamer prince, which does he look like? Looks like the the ace, doesn't he? But anyway, just just me doing stuff. Okay. So the dreamer prince, gift of liberty, and all those birds are flying out of his head. And the dreamer queen, the gift of reason. She's beautiful. I, I love this aspect. You know, like the queen of swords can be so you know, cold, but she's she's not so. Not cold so much, it's just so in knowledge and absorbing so much knowledge and she just doesn't have time for, you know, it's not coldness, it's just she doesn't have time for it. So there's too much to know. Like, look at all those books. Look at, like, the world, there's so much to know and she just doesn't have time for anything else. Which is fine, she's just getting lost in all of that knowledge. And the Dreamer King, this is the gift of judgment. He's riding a fey dragon. I love it. Yeah, he's he looks like a badass. So, and oh, woo, let go flying. All right, so the warrior, and this is fire. And the wands, power, 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 power. Look at all that red. And the warrior two, power awakens. Um, yes, yeah, so it's like you have two choices, two paths to take, choose a little kundalini looking energy going above him and his meditation and some more megaliths. There's an alignment, warrior three. This, you know, if you're on your tarot journey, this deck, as like I have said, like every tarot deck, all these new perspectives help give broader understanding of the energies of the cards. And so foundations blessed for warrior four, you know, this is like a marriage card type thing and you can see the partnership it's beautiful it looks like it's you know this is blessed by divine hands um this card especially it makes it seem more like marriage than other in other decks warrior five action frustrated so normally this is you know like competition this one's more like you're being stalled by outside forces being held back Warrior six, no foe too great. Stepping into the, stepping into a leadership role. And here's warrior seven, a hero's challenge. I like, I like how this one is. It's like normally some decks, it makes it look like the, the person is so exhausted from having to fight off. And this one's like, no, I'm ready for this challenge. Bring it on. You know, if, if anything, his display of power is going to stop or make these other make the enemies like second guess like is it worth it maybe it's not worth it maybe we'll fight another day live to fight another day i like this um this dragon flight i love it it's so cool it's like yeah dragons it definitely captures the energy of the eight of wands dragons <laughs> fey dragons i love this um Warrior Nine. The Warrior Nine in the next card, too. Um, 
the key words. It's like, yes, it gives a depth. There's a reason. There's a reason for him being a cautious, experienced warrior. He's guarding something super powerful and it, something that is worthy of and necessary to be guarded. What is it? I don't know, but it's awesome. <laughs> So pretty. I'm, gonna, I'm getting lost in these cards just talking about it. I can just go on and on. So the great task. Yeah, so the Ten of Wands, you know, it's like when it shows just the burden. Well, what's the burden for? In this case, he is a bridge between two worlds. Literally a bridge between two worlds. And he doesn't mind. Like, yeah, it's not comfortable. Like, holy crap, there's like fire all up under, under him. But he's saving. There's a beautiful reason for his sacrifice. That's how I feel about it. And here's my card. Warrior Princess. Warrior Princess. I love it because it's like page of page of wands. Oh, that doesn't sound like fun to identify with, but I'm like, I can identify with a warrior princess. Yes. I'm like, that is <laughs> I love it. So she's the gift of courage. I love I love this card. Love it. I'm like, yeah, my card. It could be your card too, I'll share. <laughs> warrior Prince, gift of spirit. Mm, he's got fire coming out of those hands. And here's the warrior queen. Normally I love the queen of wands so much, but in this deck I'm like, I love that princess so much. But she's powerful, obviously. No gift of charm. I think the warrior queen's got more than that. But, you know, anyway. Anyway. Warrior king, gift of glory. So she said this, uh, the inspiration for these cards came to her so quickly when she was... I don't know if I want to say channel, but you can the guidebook. Uh, so I haven't finished reading all of the book, you know, and how she developed this deck. But she's having to create the cards so quickly because they're coming to her so fast. And she's trying to capture as much detail as possible because the inspiration was just coming to her like a waterfall. And there's the Ace of Cups on the Dancer too, And this the keyword, Soulmates. Yes. Yes. Romantic at heart in the rainbow. The cup suit is so beautiful. I love this. is one of my favorite Three of Cups, Jubilance, and I've ne none of them capture that the energy, like those, the emotions and that, just the frolicking and just totally carefree in the moment. And so, Dancer Four is vain reflection. And she's so busy looking, she's missing out on. I feel like. Her just being so ap apathetic is um, keeping her from making connections, heartfelt connections, like it's waiting there for her. You know, and normally, you know, like in the traditional right away, you know, that cup is like, here, you know, the universe is handing that person a cup, and they're like, no, I don't want a cup. It's like, no, you have it. Don't just sit there moping. <laughs> you have it. You just need to look. And now we come to Dancer 5, where loss resides. And you can see the ray of light touching on, I always see this little rose bush and these blossoms and... You know, they always depict this card as like they're they're only seeing the glass half empty. They're not seeing what they do still have. They just if you only notice what you lose, then you're always going to be sad. And we come to Dancer Six, Born of Joy. That's so beautiful. Oh, so precious. That childhood. Here's Dancer Seven, Illusions Depths. It's kind of a, an erotic. Uh, seven of Cups, but the keyword hits. This is gorgeous. Uh, so Dancer Eight, Escaping Stagnation, and yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, yes. That's all I have to say. Yes, yes. <laughs> this card is like motto, right? Like if you're feeling stagnant, get going, get moving. Take your thoughts and your body and get start doing. Can't make a wish. Mm. It's beautiful. And here's one of my favorites, obviously, Ten of Cups. So Dancer Ten, that's heart song, and it's like all the colors, like the the chakras are all balanced and aligned, and it's just perfection and community and connection, just full connection, felt, you know, completely, fully, fully felt with the soul. <sighs> Feels. So Dancer Princess, she's a gift of expression up on her unicorn. I love her too. I love the princesses. And the Dancer Prince, he's a gift of passion. I don't know why he's hiding behind the tree though, but that's okay. Maybe he's got a story to tell. I love this uh, Dancer Queen. This is a gift of truth. She's beautiful. Beautiful. 
and there's a lot going on with this Dancer King. This is a gift of wisdom, and I didn't even really notice at first, but you know, this sea monster's wounded, and it's like he's able to tame, tame this, tame the beast, kind of like strength card, but tame it, but also heal, help. So the makers are the pentacles, and there's a little earth she, child she. There's a baby. Maker two, responsibility. Access to like both worlds with that portal. Maker three, labor's fruit. And I like how he's using his hands to grow. It's the power and using his third eye. Maker four. Oh my gosh, this deck is video is getting so long. I'm so sorry, but oh my gosh, it's so good. I'm just gonna keep going. All right, so maker four, the greedy tree. It kind of leaves all the uh, the good aspects about this card coming to a place of harmony and stability. Kind of like, I guess like immediately goes into like warning. Okay, like, hey, be careful, don't get too comfortable. Uh, maker five, this is winter's bite. I love this card. Maker 6, this pops out a lot for me as well. This is generosity. It's like the flow back and forth. Let's see. Giving, taking, receiving. Being happy with what you're able to give. Being grateful for what you can receive. And these last few cards are beautiful. So Maker 7, I love this card. Effort sustained. And I love how she's building her structure foundation. And then with the Maker 8, you know, it's built and now she can... The emergence, so she has like has her seed and it's able to grow now. With um, it's able to grow. That's a little acorn. That's so cute. And then make her nine root and blossom. Hmm. Um, once you get your structure and the foundation built, you can't you have something strong, something that you can actually grow upon or grow what you're wanting and create upon, and allow it to grow and have strong roots. So kingdom prospers. This is not what we usually see, but it's. Cool and different. There's a lot going on in this card. I haven't studied it close enough. See, I'm just going to carry this deck around and just start asking it random questions. If it gets mad at me, it'll get mad at me. <laughs> Make your princess gift of creativity. And she is pregnant. But she is like almost like the empress, right? Like a very empress-esque card. Make her prince. This is gift of connection. I love it. It's getting out in nature. It's kind of like the uh, the beautiful aspect of the devil just getting you know getting out there and feeling grounded and earthy and wild and getting back into that the nature maker queen gift of healing I love it it's like temperance oh my gosh I'm like oh these cards and so last one maker king gift of skill it's like Vulcan so and the guidebook is amazing. This video is so long, but you can see, like, this deck is powerful. Maybe I need to, I might redo the video now. Okay, either way. Um, this is a little white book, but it is very pop, uh, popular. It's very popular. Yes, it's very popular, but um, it's very good. That's lame. All right, so here's the full. You can see, so there's, like, a little, or for the Major Arcana, there's, like, a decent amount of, poem there's like a paragraph um so here's like half a page of like a, of a poem you read and then the keywords and then for the major arcana she has artist notes which are very helpful and then when we come to oh goodness okay so we come to the um minor you can see it's just like a little a few stanza of poetry or a song and then the key words, and then like when I've done my readings, I'll sometimes just write out the poem. Um, you know, combine all the cards and just write out the poem in it, just to see what the what song is coming out from the actual reading, just to see, you know, just see if I can pull out any more, you know, information. And she does have, um, on using the cards, divination, single card, uh, creating spreads for it example spreads she has um it's a pentagram career spread which i've done all of these the pentagram style it's kind of it's not my favorite but just me personally it doesn't mean anything other than i prefer like little three card spreads or the relationship one but i have tried them all and then here's the big whole self one i've only done this once just to try it out but it's it's like all too much going on for me to overwhelm me 
but it's good. And then there's on meditation and how to enter the card, which I have not tried, but you can tell, like, I just spent, I, just talking to you guys about the cards, it's like, oh, I was getting so into it. Oh, and um, there's the Celtic Wheel of the Year holidays, or, you know, special, special days, festivals. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't notice that. That's so cool, isn't it? But yeah, the keywords are really awesome. She's got a little song of the she in the back. Um, connect. So basically this deck is for connecting. You can go as deep as you want. Um, like I said, I'm going to be start. I'm just going to start asking it, you know. Well, and I have asked it more mundane questions, but I don't know how. You know what, I'm, you know what I mean? Like you pull out the rider weight. You know, you just pull out a regular old deck for everyday questions and then you save these kind of decks for something but I feel like you know what I just I want to connect with you on all the levels because everything it's told me has been so profound I don't know if I'd say like well I mean like the ten of swords um I want to say that this can help with shadow because like these cards the scary cards are super scary and it makes you like if you want to stop pulling the scary card you're gonna have to deal with your shit <laughs> So anyway, um, and the box is a nice little tuck box. I, I, I do keep it stored in this, and um, it's nice. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope, uh, sorry I went so long, but it's good. Highly recommend, as I guess I'll recommend all my decks. But if you're at all uh, interested or intrigued, yes. <laughs> yes. So have a good one.